How long do batteries live in electric cars? When do they die and why? Battery warranty of most electric cars is 8 to 10 years or 100 to 150,000 miles. But we have to face it, lithium ion batteries in electric cars lose capacity over time, which will at some point reduce your electric range. So the number of miles you can go on one charge. Now the interesting thing is this aging or the actual lifetime of the battery in your car depends on how you use it. How much charging, how much driving and at which temperatures? This raises the question, is it possible to predict the lifetime of a battery in an electric car? And can we use that information to maximize the life? Welcome back to this channel where we're talking about batteries, electric vehicles and renewable energy. I got the chance to meet an incredible startup in the battery area. They are called TWICE and they are dedicated to the entire life cycle of a battery and especially understanding on how we can maximize their usage. Imagine you are an electric vehicle fleet owner. So you're owning like a hundred electric cars, you're responsible for maintenance and you have to think about when do I have to replace the battery? Or if you sell your electric car, you might be able to get information about the current state of health. But the information that somebody that buys from you will probably want to see is how many more years can I drive this car? So I am here in Munich now in Germany at TWICE. This is Michael Michael Baumann. He is co-CEO and founder of TWICE. What is TWICE in a nutshell? So TWICE is a company providing and pioneering battery analytics uh, software. We're providing battery analytics all along the life cycle and also for different industries. And in the automotive space, I mean, we are working together with a lot of manufacturers, so like Porsche, Audi, in the end, helping them to bring like the next generation of electric vehicles faster to the market. And in the energy space, um, at the moment, it's all about switching to renewables, right? Stationary storages are one key element in this. Big integrators, so for instance, like Fluence being one of them. When did you start TWICE and how big is it today? So we started TWICE in 2018, right after our PhD. Now we are around about 110 people here in Munich, but also the US um, in Chicago. Uh, and also having our office in Paris. So first, let's talk about why do batteries age? You can look at a lithium ion battery cell just like a human being. There is electrochemical processes going on inside of this cell that leads to certain aging. This aging is represented in losing capacity over time as well as driving up the internal resistance of the battery. What that means on a vehicle level is that your electric range, so the driving distance that you have on one charge will be reduced over time. There is many factors that have an impact on how batteries age. For example, fast charging your car at very low temperatures leads to something that is called lithium dendrites, which is one of the aging effects that you would see on cells like this. Overall, what does that mean? While we cannot really avoid the aging process itself, we can treat the battery in the best possible way, which means we heat and cool the batteries whenever we need to keep them in this very comfortable temperature window. We fast charge them only when we really need it and normally use lower currents, or we leave our car not completely charged or completely discharged for longer times. All that will improve the healthiness, the lifetime of your battery. Now, what is actually the state of health or the lifetime of a battery? So surprisingly, there is no standard definition of the state of health of a battery. Most of the industry today would define it as the capacity loss that you have compared to the original capacity. And most of the car makers as well as battery manufacturers define the end of life for a car battery as a battery with 70 to 80% of its original capacity. So if you have a data logger like I have it for my Mustang Mach-E and you connect it to your car, you can actually read the current state of health, which in the beginning would be 100%. And for me right now, after I think half a year of driving, it would be 99 something percent. So you as an EV owner, you can in most cases access the current state of health for your battery. But what you don't have access to is what is the remaining life? 
And this is where it becomes very tricky. Aging is a highly non-linear process. It's very hard to understand it, to model it, to calculate it, and even to measure it. In most cases, in order to get that information, you have to have access to some sort of historical data of this battery. So you have to understand the entire battery life cycle. This is where TWICE comes in. I learned from TWICE that they have two approaches how they tackle that. One approach for their battery models to predict lifetime starts with testing battery cells. Let's go to the lab. <laughs> so how far is it? Just around the corner. TWICE Labs! <laughs> <laughs> so this is the new battery lab that you're building up right now because yeah. there's so much demand. It's still under construction, yeah, but we're looking forward to open it soon. The interesting thing is TWICE is a battery analytics yeah. startup, right? True. So why do we need battery testing? <laughs> so to develop algorithms, battery models, everything for in-life analytics, we usually start on the very fundamental to do tests on okay. module or cell level. So one way to build a battery model is start with cell testing. So what do we see here? What are these boxes here? Those are temperature chambers. To set up a constant temperature condition to simulate different environmental conditions. So if I want to have a battery in a car later in Alaska, so which temperatures can you simulate here? Uh, down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Hopefully that's still fine for Alaska. <laughs> And how many cells are you testing in one of these chambers? Uh, strongly depends on, on the size of a battery cell. I mean, a battery cell can have a size like that, but up to a size like that. So for the big ones, we can maybe go up to 10 if it works. For the small ones, 50, 60. Go to the other side. Let's check it there. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you. That's very warm here. <laughs> we, we don't get the heat out anymore. No chance. So can we see a cell somewhere? There's a few cylindrical ones. It looks like a fridge. So this is at 40 degree, right? That's impedance measurement. What are yeah. you doing with that? We use it to get even more information inside about physical and chemical processes within a battery cell. Right. So you mentioned that some of the tests yeah. take four weeks, could be six months, could be up to two years. Yeah. I mean, that's a long time. When you are done with your tests, yeah. what's the next steps? What is happening with this battery test data? I mean, we, we export the data from time to time, not only at the end of a long test period. And then we start to model the cell. So modeling means for us, really, we try to make a digital twin out of the cell to simulate the electrical behavior, the thermal behavior, at the end of the day, the aging behavior of a battery cell. We will now go back into the office and meet somebody that is responsible for the battery simulation and modeling. We have just visited the battery lab and now it's very exciting for us to understand what do you do to build a battery model. You need to a little bit distinguish between two different different ways like the question is where does the data come from the data could come from either the laboratory or on the other hand we are gathering data from the field itself so once the the batteries are in the field they're through for example telematics sending data into our cloud or a partner's cloud and okay. then we are we are analyzing them and what what needs to happen is yes you need to build these famous models from all of the data that we gather um, as kind of stylized model of it, right? Okay. And say, so, okay, we now understand how this, um, how the battery behaves, how it works in different operating conditions, um, and then can put it one level more up. And for example, as you can see here, right? Put it in front of the customer that they can understand that yes. it's kind of human readable again. Let's imagine I am a fleet manager and I get a service from TWICE. How would that look like? What do I learn from it? What is really the value that you provide? So a lot of fleet managers today have the problem that they don't really have an overview of the, how that asset of the battery is actually performing in the field. So that's, that's really the first step, making it transparent. Yes. And making it transparent means, for example, like a battery overview of, of your fleet, you know, which batteries might require action, how is the overall SOH, so the, the health of our batteries overall in the fleet. Most importantly and most crucially for most of our customers is actually having a very detailed overview of the state of health of each of the batteries. Yeah. That's typically the starting point for them. So what we can see here, for example, would be the state of health at each time. But can you also like predict in the future? So what is really the remaining life of these batteries? So very right hand side, you then see 
okay, we're also actually predicting state of health into the future. And that, of course, is the next step uh, of, or like the next evolution for a fleet manager to understand how, how and when to take action, right? Yes. Going from kind of reaction, something happens and I need to, need to react and, for example, exchange a battery, they can really plan ahead. They can plan ahead for their investments, but also for the workshop, for their supply chain, uh, discussing with their, with their OEMs or, or their, their providers if something needs to, um, needs to be exchanged. Is there any other actions that they could take that they can learn from this data to kind of extend their lifetime? What they can do is building on the transparency itself and covering aging drivers, first of all. So is it, for example, the driving behavior? Uh, that is mostly impacting uh, the degradation of the battery? Is it more the charging strategy? What within the charging strategy they could potentially uh, change? And this is where then you get into this next phase of not just transparency, but real optimization, mm -hmm. like real-time optimization of the fleet. We are talking to, uh, to customers that have hundreds of vehicles in the fleet, and they really need to think about how do I optimize basically the most important asset that they are driving around. And the important thing is, it is really individual per battery. We don't just have rule of thumbs saying, you know, okay, a low, a low charging rate, it's typically good, yes, yeah. but we can really, really dive deep into what are the aging drivers for each of the, each of the batteries and then make specific recommendations. And the other important aspect is, is really taking, taking kind of proactive actions. Yes. Right? So when, when to swap a battery or when to start talking about warranty conditions has a, is, has a huge impact on, on actually TCO and financial performance for most of our clients. Yeah. Yes. How long do batteries live in electric cars? What would be your answer? I, I would put it into buses. The industry standard today is kind of seven years that they assume it, it, they would last. We are pretty confident that we can quite easily with our services extend that lifetime 20%, 30%, so going really towards like the 10, 12 years even. Let's imagine we're, again, the example of the electric buses. We're talking about this first lifetime now and the SOH and predicting how long do batteries live. But at some point, you, you already mentioned, they would need to replace those batteries. But what happens with these first life batteries? So is TWICE also involved in kind of second life applications and how does that look like? We are and we are in very different um, forms, and, forms and fashions, right? I just, just came back from, um, from one major transport operator and what they are doing is they're taking out the, the bus batteries themselves and thinking about it, putting stationary storage into their depots. And why do they need to do that? Because the grid connection of the depot is typically not big enough or not strong enough to have hundreds of buses charging at the same time, right? Yeah. So that's where, where we are going from like first life to second life and doing this, uh, doing this, this analytics kind of throughout the, the life cycle. Take away for that video, the lifetime of a battery in an electric car depends on how you use it. This gives you the opportunity to do some things to maximize the lifetime. There are incredible startups out there, like TWICE that we met in this video, who are actively working on trying to use all that data analytics and software to improve the overall value of batteries, make them more traceable, maximize their life, and really they help building the circular economy for e-mobility and renewable energy. I had a great time with the whole TWICE team and Julie the dog, and just so you know, they are hiring. We are hiring here in Munich, but we are also hiring, like I said, internationally, since we are addressing a global problem. Feel free to, to send us a mail. Yeah? <laughs> what is your vision for our electrified future? I mean, my, my big wish is to really generate a CO2 neutral future on electricity, on mobility and also the whole electrification. So that's my personal wish and that's why I'm working for TRICE, why I'm working on battery cells, because there's a big possibility there to go for sustainable future. You seem to be very passionate about that topic. Where does this come from? I think I speak for everybody in TRICE if I say we are really trying to accelerate the road to an electrified future and you can really touch and feel it, right? So you can really feel that we are, we are part of that journey and I think it's, it's, a great, it's a great cause to work for. See you next time. Bye!